Okay, let's prove the next theorem. It says, for any uh, given integer a, b, and c, the greatest common divisor of a and b must be same as the greatest common divisor of b with a plus c, b. So the meaning is, if you have any greatest common divisor of a and b, then some kind of linear combination between a and b, like this and b also has exactly same greatest common divisor and the method for to prove this theorem is like this let's just find all the possible common divisor between b and a plus c b and a and b so let's just think just choose all the possible common divisor between this number and between these two number and saying they are exactly the same. Therefore, what? The greatest common divisor for both must be exactly the same. That's the way we, we want to prove here. Okay, let's start with A and B, the right hand side. So let's say E is the greatest common divisor of A and B. Then by theorem 2, E should be also a divisor of linear combination of A and B. So no matter what C we have e must be a common divisor or the divisor of this number right so we are not saying e is the greatest common divisor of a and b just any divisor of a and b it should satisfy this it should be also divisor of a plus c b and the meaning is that number e is a common divisor of a and a plus c b so it means if we choose any common divisor a and b must be also a common divisor of these two numbers okay. b and that right okay. so like the second part is the other way let's just choose any divisor of a plus c b and b and let's say that is f then by same actually the theorem number two the linear combination of these two number also has f as a common divisor so one of the possible way to combine this is a plus c b minus c times b which is a so meaning is a must be also a divisor of, uh, f must be also divisor of a so all together f must be a divisor of a and b which is right so we can say f is a common divisor of a and b therefore all together any common divisor of a and b must be common divisor of that and vice versa so the greatest common divisor of a b must be also a greatest common divisor of these two numbers so that's the end of proof